Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. Hafiday and welcome to another edition of Cruising with KUAM. In the driver's seat is Nick Delgado and joining him is American Cancer Society 2017 Hero of Hope, Frankie Perez. All right, so Frankie Perez, thank you so much for joining us for Cruising. Oh, thank you for having me. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, so if you guys don't know, Frankie and I, we go back to my earlier days of broadcasting um, once upon a time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a long time. Yeah. We don't want to go on to how long. About <laughs> ages. So what have you been up to since then? Um, you know, just uh, enjoying life right now and, uh, you know, trying to keep my health in order. And, you know. Health definitely has been a big thing for you uh, mm -hmm. in the past couple of years. Um, tell us, what was it like two years ago, right? Yeah. Uh, when about. you received your diagnosis. Um, well... You know, obviously it gets you by surprise, especially uh, colon cancer at such a young age. But um, yeah, so you know, you think uh, things are going well, and then all of a sudden there's a hurdle you got to jump over. Yeah, quite the yeah. hurdle. You never imagined, like you said, such a young age. You were only what 38 at the time. Yeah. Um, and so what what caused you to go get the checkup where you where you found that out? Um. You know, usual signs. Uh, I had b blood in my stool, mm -hmm. um, and then I was having uh, abdominal, uh, abdominal, <laughs> abdominal. I can't even abdominal say pain. Yeah, abdominal pains, and um, yeah. And so of course, you know, colon cancer wasn't the first thing on the list, but um, you know, we just kind of knew right. something was wrong. Yeah, definitely something was wrong, and you know, we just kind of went down a checklist of what. The possibilities could be from iterable bowel syndrome to you know polyps or whatever and uh, you know in the end we just found out it was colon cancer and what was the first thing going through your mind when you heard that heard those words from the doc uh, I have cancer um, it takes a while yeah it takes a while for it to sink in for sure um, I like to describe it as a uh, slow absorbing sponge you know uh, but um yeah so it to be honest it, like the whole weight of it didn't sit in until like maybe two days later you know you're still in disbelief i'm sure uh disbelief and um more in well what comes next what do i have to do you know mm -hmm. um I was just already like, well, what's the next step? You know, he told me and, you know, the doc kind of gave me a few minutes, but, uh, you know, I was like, well, let's go to step two then. Now that we know what it is, right. what do we do now? And, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely, uh, you gotta, you gotta make peace with a lot of things. Yeah, you really do. It has you doing a lot. I'm sure you went, started thinking about all the things that you, still wanted to do in life you mm -hmm. thought about your family sorry um it's okay um and so tell, walk us through what happened from there uh when he gave you the instructions mm -hmm. how long before um things started changing uh not long really um it's it's pretty much uh everything just kind of takes a takes a halt and uh you know you got to concentrate on uh, your health and uh, you know telling the family too was uh, for me was uh, uh, a little a little hard but yet almost comforting at the same time yeah you know because it's it's nice to get it off your chest like okay because you know I know my family will support me mm -hmm. I know my friends will support me so um, it wasn't a question of whether or not I should tell them. I already told them. Right. Was yeah. it ever overwhelming, just the, the amount of uh, people that were providing some comfort your way? Was it ever overwhelming at, at times? Uh, yeah. Uh, humbling would be the proper okay. term. Very, very humbling. 
yeah um, you know this was the very first time I'm doing fundraisers for me you know I'm always going to the medical fundraisers the host of those fundraisers yeah, I'm hosting the medical fundraisers you know I'm uh, you know knocking on wood mm -hmm. with everybody else and um, yeah uh, actually that was also surprisingly uh, kind of an eye-opener too like you know you see the fundraising ticket you see the medical fundraiser words on it and then you see your name and it's like wow that's that's where I'm at quite um, an eye-opener yeah and um, but the the amount of support I got was yes overwhelming um, and a very humbling experience and uh, you know you, you don't think about how many people are actually a part of your life until um, you know something, such like, a, this yeah, hits something you. like this happens and uh, you know I you start to become very thankful and you know I pray every day for everybody that uh, is involved with my life because you know I could I wouldn't be here without without each and every one of you Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. Some people, they always are concerned about the change of, of how, you know, being told that they have cancer, mm -hmm. how this might affect them, their physical appearance, and then mentally. Mm -hmm. How was that for you? Um, like I said, you, you you have to make peace with those things. First, you got to make peace with your maker, you know, because then you don't know how this is going to turn out. One year, a few months, right. you know, and then you meet some people that, oh, I'm a 15-year survivor, and you're like, oh, wow. thank God. Thank God I met you because, right. you know, you, you're Come giving a me long hope. Way. Yeah, yeah, so, oh, there's 15 years. So, you know, it gives you, you know, hope and... Um, but uh, from there, you, you, you went about getting treatment. Yeah. So, you know, I wasn't going to, I was going to do everything I I could or possibly can or whatever is available to me. Yeah. Um, I imagine that I can mean, be exhausting, you know, though, draining. Just yeah, it is very. Um, and, you know, and I, I also, before this, you know, never really understood the people that didn't opt for treatment or, you know, just said, you know what, uh, I'm going to accept this and I'm going to ride it out until the, you know, until it takes over. Never understood that mentality, but now I do. Now I understand. It's, uh, you do got to make peace with a lot of things and you do got to make very, very important decisions about not only your life, but, you know, you know, your family. Right. You know, I have a son. His future was uh, was really more important than my future. You know? so, yeah, yeah. Has, has you planning for everything that you never imagined you would have to in mm -hmm. life? And so, how long did it take before you were uh, in remission? Um, well, it uh, so the way it works is that uh, you know, first it starts off the biopsy, you get diagnosed. Um, for my situation, colon cancer, I got a partial colectomy. Okay. So that means they take out a, the, the part of the colon that has the tumor, yeah. and then they reattach the, the, the colon. Okay. Um, so, in essence, it's gone. You know, the cancer is gone. Now it's just a matter of whether or not it's spread. Okay. And that's the second hurdle you got to <laughs> uh, you got to get ready for. You know, you got to bear the brunt of that news. Um, whether or not it spread, you know, cross your fingers that it didn't, but if it did, then you gotta, you know, how far did it spread, things like that. But lucky for me, um, it didn't spread. So I went through six months of chemo uh, every other week, and that was just to make sure whatever's lingering in there that we can't see, okay. uh, we kind of kill. That's that's the, the reason for that. So, but yeah, and then um, you know, six months later, uh, you know, I just.
start getting blood work. I'm still getting blood work every uh, every quarter, mm -hmm. and you know that's about to uh, spread out soon if the news uh, continues to be what it is. Uh, you know, it's looking good. Um, but yeah, it's just a constant, and then of course, lifestyle change. Yeah, tell me about some of those lifestyle changes that you've done. Um, I mean in our business we're always in the public eye mm -hmm. so we're out there we're at events sure we're always speaking we pick up habits from here mm -hmm. and there yeah and so you know yeah you you've bring up also loop. been been pretty uh, athletic as well yeah um so t talk a little bit about that about just how that might have enhanced what you've already been into uh, uh, sports wise sure well i'm glad you bring up our uh the state of our business you right. know um yeah it does require a lot of uh, socializing and uh you know uh, delving into a few vices here and there but um you know and it's also the mentality i was at uh you know my 20s you know i was superman you know <laughs> nothing can kill me right. you know i'll drink whatever i'll smoke whatever but I didn't smoke whatever, right. I mean, obviously. But uh, I was a smoker, and um, and yeah, the the lifestyle was not uh, a healthy one. Mm -hmm. We should just say. But I was athletic, and I was, you know, in the mentality that I'm still young. I'm 20. Um, you know, I just need a jog here and there, mm -hmm. and you know, I can uh, balance everything out. But um, yeah, looking back, I think maybe. I, I could have had a healthier lifestyle, maybe a little more salad here and there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, you know, now that's changed. I mean, my lifestyle has definitely changed. I stopped smoking, um, cut down on my drinking. I do a, a lot of exercising, you know, uh, physical activity. Yeah. And now, you know, I eat salad three, I mean, if I could eat salad and for breakfast, I'd eat salad for wow. breakfast. But, Good on uh, you. <laughs> you know, I try and eat a salad with every meal and oatmeal in the morning. You know, those those things that I should have been doing yeah. all along. And so I think the, uh, the takeaway from all this is that, you know, um, hey, adopt that healthy lifestyle, you know. Really? Uh, prevention is what it's about. And if you can, like, uh, uh, avoid, you know avoid it then what yeah. about physical activities that you're into right mm -hmm. now you're into like some competitive uh... I, I do jujitsu right yeah um, uh, but that's really just to keep my body moving um, it's a great sport you know I do a lot of core exercises and uh, you know um, it just ensures me uh, that I did you know enough physical activity in a yeah. day because you know, there are some days where I'll jog and I just stop. You know, I'm like, okay, I'm tired. <laughs> Who doesn't? And, I, and then I look down, I'm like, man, I only jogged for three minutes. You know, <laughs> it's like, huh. So uh, at least I know that uh, when I do do jujitsu, it's, uh, you know, I do get a full hour's worth of uh, physical activity. Yeah. And, and then I, call, I try and couple that with my diet. So. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trade-in plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. And with all the titles that you've held in, in the last three decades, four decades of your life, mm -hmm. cancer survivor. Yeah. That's now something that you add, you tag on. You add it mm -hmm. to your Twitter account. You add mm -hmm. it to all your social media accounts. Yeah, yeah. Well... Yeah, and and to go back, you know, if, you know, uh, being the hero of hope for American Cancer Society was uh, was something I would have never dreamed of, obviously. Um, I, I'm very uh, humbled and, um, you know, it's, it's a big honor, really, to be called the hero of hope. Um, but, yeah, you know... Um, there was a point in my time, uh, you know, during treatment where, you know, people were coming up to me and, you know, hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. Are you doing all right? And uh, this and that. And and at one point, I, I, I guess I could say that uh, 
you know, I was like, man, I don't want to be known as the guy with cancer, you know? Yeah. Like, hey, there's imagine. Frankie. He had cancer, you know? Um, so it was a little, uh, it was a little something to get used to. But then uh, through a lot of prayer and, you know, a lot of uh, um, just experiences of people coming up to me and, you know, pulling me to the side, mm -hmm. you know, and just, you know, talking to me about their personal stuff and, you know, hey, my dad or, you know, my mom or, you know, me, even them themselves. Right. And you wouldn't have ever thought, you know, like these are people that I've known for years and like, oh, no way. And they were asking me for advice and, you know, hey, what I should I do? So, you know, I realized, hey, you know, maybe I'm, maybe there is a bigger picture here. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm, I'm supposed to help these people out or, you know. Yeah, you uh, don't have to see it as it, it, this defines the person I am right yeah, now. But I mean, you know, it, it's like, your, it's your, I guess, it's your life's purpose at this point. At this point, yeah. And I, and I'm accepting it, and, you know, being, uh, you know, um, given the hero of hope title mm -hmm. was a little confirmation in saying, uh, Okay, yeah, I guess I am here to talk to people about it yeah. and let them know that, hey, uh, it's not a death sentence, you know, um, I'm still here, you know, um, there are a lot of things available out there that mm -hmm. uh, are, are helpful and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's something you can overcome for sure. So yeah. the, the Hero of Hope, the 2017 Hero of Hope, it's you and uh, another individual that yeah. was selected for the region, for the Pacific for region. The, um, yeah, for our region. So um, it's a little weird right now. The uh, American Cancer Society is uh, reconstructing the regions, I believe. Right. I mean, um, from what I heard. But uh, so our region is Guam, Hawaii, and Texas, okay. if you can believe that. So uh, that's our region. So yeah, there's two Hero of Hopes for our region. and. One is myself, and there's another uh, kid. He's from Hawaii. Yeah. But he actually grew up on Guam, too. Okay. Yeah. So his mom is a survivor. He's a hero of hope as a care caregiver. So. And all this just transpired in the last two years from when you got your diagnosis mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. um, to treatment. Uh, how did they even figure to, to find you or select you? Or did they just call you one day and yeah. say, hey... No, that was exactly what happened. They yeah. called me one day, and uh, it was this uh, lady with a southern accent on the phone. She was like, hi, is this Frankie? Okay. And I was like, uh, yeah, you know, and she proceeded to explain that, uh, you know, she's honored to let me know that uh, I have been selected for this year's Hero of Hope. Yeah. And, you know, I just kind of... Had no really, clue yeah. what you were getting into. Yeah, uh, well, you know... Um, I got to together with the folks from the American Cancer Society, and uh, you know I just kind of. So what is this hero of hope? Yeah. And uh, what do I wear a cape? Do I? <laughs> you know, what do I do? And they were like, oh, um, you know, well basically you're just going to you know um, spread the the message about um, you know all the all the things that are available to cancer patients through the American Cancer Society, yeah. and uh, you know you're a survivor. Um, you know, you get to talk to people in the community and, you know, go on TV, do radio interviews, things like things that. Things you already know all the time. And, yeah, I was like, well, what do you know? Yeah. I guess it's meant to be. The stars align. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's weird. Way sometimes. Yeah, you know, it's, it's very weird. But, um, and, and it's weird you say that too, because, you know, uh, I'm just going to say that growing up or, you know, before all of this, you know, I'm a church going kind of guy so I say my prayers and mm -hmm. you know um, a lot of my prayers involved me controlling my vices yeah uh, you know uh, please help me Lord quit smoking yeah. please uh, you know uh, help me to get my priorities in check you know blah 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 and um, not to say it was divine intervention or something but uh, you know the stars did align and this one event in my life answered all those prayers I quit smoking I controlled all my vices, my priorities are in check, you know, so, I don't know, it's weird, it's almost, uh, it's almost like a blessing.
Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. Triple J says yes. Check out our new and enhanced website at TripleJGuam.com. Get real-time view of every vehicle in our inventory. Instant trading plus easy financing. Triple J says yes. TripleJGuam.com. What message then would you give to others out there? Even if they find themselves in, in the boat that you once were in, mm -hmm. you know, this will never be me. What would you say to them? Uh, I say listen to your body. Yeah. Um, yeah, the body... Uh, uh, has a great way of working things out, but uh, it also tells you stuff's wrong, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I kind of ignored a few signs, and uh, you know, don't wait till it's too late. If you can get a test, get the test, you know? If uh, your doctor recommends it, you know, just do it. Um, it's better than the alternative, and uh, you know, just healthy lifestyle, and you know, try and live a good life. And sure. you never know when it's gonna. You really never do. Yeah, I mean, I hate to be somber. Or no, like that, you know, but it's real hey, life. It's, uh, it's you, the fact. Yeah, you don't need to get cancer to, to for me to tell you. You know, enjoy your blessings. Um, you know, be good to each other, and you know, yeah, uh, just have fun in your life. All right, and then yeah. I'm sure we'll be seeing you later out there at Relay for Life. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. I'll be there with, with my, your cape. Uh, my Hero of Hope t-shirt <laughs> and uh, maybe a cape. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> All right. But, yeah. Any but final? I also, yeah. I just want to tell people, you know, if you see me around and, uh, you know, don't don't be afraid and you got questions, don't be afraid to pull me to the side. Or if you know somebody that uh, uh, knows me and you got questions about uh, whatever kind of situation you're in, you know, uh, yeah, I'm here to uh, here to give some advice if you need it. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good, Frankie. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Hey, I appreciate it. Thank it's great you, catching Nick. up, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see you again. Yeah, again, we go. We really do go way back. <laughs> yeah, I know. Beginning of my broadcast career. Yeah. Frankie's been doing it a lot longer, yeah. but your hair game has improved <laughs> since then. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>